Fit and 10 Nation, it is day 48 of the Fit and 10 Challenge. And uh, just so you know, I'll be teaching tonight at 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, that's a lift camp and, no, boot camp and a lift camp, I believe. And I'll be teaching tomorrow at 5, which will be, we'll be doing uh, legs. Saturday we'll be doing upper body, okay? All right. Um, Day 48, 22 days to go. You can still make mega massive change. I just want to remind you, you can still make what? You can still make mega massive change. Just say that. Just say to yourself, I can still make mega massive change. You can. Basically, a third of the challenge left. All right, question here. This is a, this is a good question. Uh, maybe some of this stuff you guys are not aware of. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you probably are not aware of uh, most of this stuff. But maybe you weren't aware that we have... Um, basically two kinds of fat in the body um, uh, two, two types of uh, fat cells we have a, a white uh, fat cell and a brown fat cell and the brown fat cells really are only like really only make up like on average like for the average person like 5% of your fat tissue and it typically sits up around your I think it's like your arms and your neck and uh, when you're cold in particular, so when your body's trying to maintain its, its body temperature, this is a great reservoir for uh, energy. Um, but not only that, uh, brown uh, adipose tissue has, um, it has a higher metabolic effect than regular fat tissue. So it's kind of a, you know, if you, in terms of staying lean, it's a, definitely a fat tissue that we, that we want. And it also has uh, more mitochondria which is basically like the, the powerhouse in every cell. It has actually more mitochondria per cell than, uh, than a white, much more than a regular white uh, fat cell. So um, what that means is um, it's going to take in more oxygen. It's going to be able to produce more energy. It also has more uh, capillaries in it, which means it has greater blood flow, which makes sense so energy can get dispersed into the... Um, into your vascular system and distribute uh, energy about uh, where it needs to go uh, in instances, uh, especially when you're cold. Um, now, the interesting thing is, is you can convert fat cells to brown fat cells through exercise, okay? Uh, this has been shown through uh, 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 high activities of aerobic, but there is also some, I don't know if there's evidence for this. I believe there's some evidence for this. Uh, I haven't thoroughly looked into us into it but I there is one person that I follow who I admire and I trust and this person says that um, that, that it is the case in fact um, that weight training has the highest effect on brown fat tissue that is converting your regular fat cells into brown fat cells so the fat cells that are going to be more metabolically costly again right these these fat cells which are you know essentially um, going to help you to stay leaner Okay, which I know it seems like a bit of an oxymoron because it's fat, but it has a much higher, as I said, has a much higher metabolic um, consequence on the body. All right, so, you know, I think I want to remind you guys too, and this wasn't in the question that was asked, but, you know, fat is not just an insulator, right? We need body fat to do many things on the body, include provide cushioning um, to help with the, um, you know, the assimilation of certain vitamins and minerals. Um, it's also a regulator for your uh, for your 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 levels of hunger. Um, it provides different signaling. Um, it does a lot of signaling within the body. Like your body, you know, just not to go off on a tangent, but your body it, it doesn't work in these discrete you know single systems. It's not like your like your liver's working on its own. And, you know, your heart's working on its own. You know, the whole body's sort of working together. So, you know, this is the the one thing that I have an issue with with the general medical system is, you know, you have a heart issue. If you have a problem with your heart, you go to a heart specialist. You, you know, if you have a problem with uh, depression, you see psychologists. But the problem here is that we don't actually see that some of these, there are things that are interconnected. So, you know, this is where um, traditional Western medicine just doesn't seem to come through. And... Um, you know, so basically what I'm getting at here is, 
You know, when we talk about things like liposuction, and this wasn't asked in the question, by the way, when we talk about liposuction, we're talking about getting rid of an organ in the body. Fat tissue is actually an organ, okay? It has many, many roles. Um, so, you know, we weren't made to have, we, we're, we're supposed to have some of this stuff, okay? Um, so let's talk about one of the roles that it has. One is, one important role, that is, you know, your body has a set point that it really likes to operate on in terms of a body fat percentage. And people vary on this. So some people might be slightly heavier set. They might have more body fat, but this is where genetically they, they tend to uh, want to reside most comfortably. Now that isn't to say you can't change it. However, um, if somebody, for example, gets too low in body fat, the, the, felt, the fat cells in their body are going to release more horm hormone, uh, well, they'll release more leptin, and sorry, they'll release more ghrelin. Ghrelin makes you hungry, okay? Ghrelin is a hormone that is, is one of the hormones that is responsible for making you feel hungry. So when you get too lean, your, your fat cells release more ghrelin, so you're gonna feel more hungry. When you get, as fat cells get bigger and bigger, that is you're getting fatter, fat cells release leptin, and leptin tells your body, tells it, it actually makes you feel um, less hungry. Uh, so fat has a role in the, it has many roles in the body, um, including an important one in maintaining um, your body fat, uh, or what we call your, your body fat set point. Um, all right, I know I said more on this than you want to know, but I just want to share some of those things with you. Um, you know, by the way, ghrelin, which makes you hungry, if you, when you eat more protein, if there's one reason to have you eat protein, when you eat more protein, your ghrelin levels drop. Okay, so you feel less hungry. Hence why you feel so full off of protein. Again, that, you know, a lot of you say, I'm eating so much, I'm so full. No, it's not so much that. It's that you're eating foods that drop your ghrelin levels. Okay, I'm going to say that again. It's not so much that your calories are so high that you feel so full because you're eating so much food. It's not that. It's that you're eating foods that help to reduce your ghrelin levels, which make you less hungry. Okay, what, what doesn't do this? How about um, high GI foods, high glycemic index carbohydrates? Okay, they increase ghrelin, so you feel hungrier. All right, so, you know, this is where we can get, you know, we can get tricked into thinking that we're eating more or less, when in fact we're not. We're just eating foods that are easier to eat. Okay, 7.45, all right. This person also asks about hyperplasia versus hypertrophy. So hyperplasia is the um, creation of more, of, it's basically cell splitting. So cells split into two cells, okay? Cells basically multiply. Versus hypertrophy, which is the enlargement of a cell, okay? Now the question was, when it comes to training, well, there's a few questions with it, I think. Well, there's, I'll say it, I'll just say a little bit on this. Um, a little bit more than probably asked. So when it comes to musculature, you cannot cause hyperplasia. You cannot subdivide muscle cells. You can increase cell muscle size. However, well, that's not, that's not totally true. I think if you take growth hormone, if I'm not totally sure, but I'm pretty sure if you take growth hormone, that is, that is one way of causing hyperplasia of the muscle cell. Okay, but I, and I think that's the only way. If there is a way, that is the only way that can happen. All right. So um, there's a lot of stuff, if you read online, there's a lot of stuff that people say that growth hormone's useless to people who are trying to increase muscle mass, but it doesn't appear to be that way. Um, and again, hypertrophy is just this increasing the size of the, of, the, of the cell, okay? So the other question was is, now what about hypertrophy versus hyperplasia in fat cells? Well, um, and, the, and <clears throat> this person asks, does hyperplasia go up in fat cells as you get older? No, it doesn't. In fact, it's really more likely that hyperplasia will happen more as a, as a young child, especially if you're a young child that overeats. Yeah. So if, you're, if, you're, if your child has a uh, deficiency in leptin production, it's always gonna be hungry, it's gonna eat a lot more, and it's gonna go through cell division more so, more there's gonna be more fat cells created. That 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 person is set up for life to be overweight. Um, so kind of interesting. Um, so uh, the likelihood that you're going to, at, as an adult, split your fat cells, I think is quite low, okay? 
Um, it, there doesn't seem to be too much evidence out there of that happening. Um, but hyper, hyper hypertrophy of fat cells, yeah, that happens, right, when you eat enough. Although my thought is on this, and I don't know for sure, but you know, I, I would think that the cell can only get so big, and then eventually it's got to divide. But again, this is purely just my thoughts. I have no idea. All right. Um, did I answer everything on this? Oh, you know, one thing I wanted to talk about, about just because we we're talking about fat here, and I didn't mention this in my other video, is, you know, visceral fat is uh, one of the largest contributors to inflammatory markers in the body. So it's pro-inflammatory, visceral fat, the fat that sits deep in your, in your uh, abdominal cavity. So just something to note as well. All right, message of the day. Just remember this one, because it's true. What comes easy won't last, and what lasts won't come easy, all right? And, and when I'm talking about coming easy, I'm not just talking about the activity in and of itself, but the whole spectrum of what you're doing, okay? So it's the whole process, the mental process, the acceptance, the, you know, the everything, the mind Fs, okay? All these things, all right? So I'm gonna say it again, what comes easy won't last, and what lasts won't come easy, all right? So. You know, keep that in mind when you're when you feel like you know this road is really hard. It's meant to be well. It's it's meant to be sustainable, really, and I think it it really is. Anyways, that's it, you guys. Submit, commit. I think I wrote everything. I think I read everything on my paper that I wanted to say today. Um, positive energy, positive vibes. Believe in yourself for the love of God and uh, send me some gratitude. I forgot to put some gratitude out here today. I will do that. And I'll try not to read somebody's that I've already uh, read. And um, I will talk to you all very soon. Hopefully I will see you tomorrow night at 5 p.m. for some legs. It's gonna be a doozy. I think I'm gonna put a few twists into the workout. I'll see ya. Well, it's on.